Grappling Groundwork is the official podcast of Grapplerpedia.com. Now, here's your host, Professor Tony Matters. What's going on, everyone? Professor Tony here. So today I'm going to talk about sport judo. And I'm going to be straight up with you. I got a real problem with sport judo. Clarify a few things. I said sport judo. I love judo as an art. I like all martial arts. I think all of them have purpose. However, I do think a lot of them become sort of insular and just really start to work against very specific situations and they kind of lose their their thread after a while and forget their purpose, right? And I think that no martial art exemplifies that more than sport juice. And I might end up talking out of my ass a lot on this. So uh, if I'm wrong, let me know. But I'm just going to give you a lot of like facts that as I see them and a lot of my opinions and I really want to know what you guys think. So uh, sport judo or just judo in general was developed in uh, what the 1880s by uh, Kano, Jigoro Kano. And uh, he really designed it to be an all around art, right? There was, there was some striking, there was throws, there was self-defense, uh, there was weapon defense. There was all, the diff- all these different kind of things. But as time evolved, judo really started to uh, change. A lot of uh, what we consider modern jiu-jitsu, a lot of uh, ground game and joint locks and stuff like that were incorporated and came from judo. Now, if, if you look at sport judo or basically what you see in the Olympics for the Americas, I mean, judo is a lot more popular in um, Western Asia and Europe, and, and they have judo competition all the time. But in America, it's practically dying. But if you look at those, it looks like judo is just all about the throw, which is pretty much true. Um, Judo, like I said, did have a lot of different aspects, especially uh, one thing that you don't see anymore is that judo had old school katas, right? If you don't know what a kata is, it's kind of like a martial art dance where, you know, it's how you move around and you block this strike or, you know, catch this weapon in your hand. And honestly, I kind of see the purpose at least at one point, but you know, Bruce Lee always said, take what works, leave what doesn't. And in this case, that's something that I can just see being vestigial that should just be removed. I think the problem with judo is, is how the sport has not been allowed to evolve. But a, a, the major problem is the rules that have been instituted over time in order to, to quote unquote, promote better judo. For example, uh, a double leg takedown, right? That's something that we normally equate with wrestling. That used to be a judo throw. Judo was very all-encompassing. But over time, when judo was presented with wrestling, they they found that it wasn't really um, promoting good judo, good judo throws. A lot of people were grabbing the legs. So they made it a rule that you can't grab anyone below the belt. And to me, that's just a a hard example of uh, forced stoppage of evolution. Now, you can sit here and kind of be uh, armchair negativity here by saying that, well, wrestlers were coming in and eating their lunch, so they wanted to keep judo more pure. And I think there's some validity to that, but I think the real problem is rather than trying to combat the situation by developing better technique or evolving their other throws, they tried to uh, just keep everything holistic and homogenous. And I think that's much to their detriment. And there's all different kind of illegal grips that you can do in judo. You know, the typical grip is uh, same side arm reaches across, grabs that lapel. Your other arm is grabbing their arm and he's kind of dance around like that. Then there's a few other grips that you can take that are legal, like you can grab on top of the shoulder on the same side. But as soon as you cross over, uh, gra- uh, do a cross grip or any other kind of lapel grip or reach around the back or anything like that, you got three seconds uh, before they'll call a foul on you. I mean, I've done judo tournaments before, and I was a BJJ brown belt at the time, and um, they I almost fouled out of and was disqualified almost every match. And it's just because they knew that I was just uh, – they saw it. I tried to come in there and just force them to the ground and try to get the choke or the pin real quick, but they didn't want me to do that because I wasn't promoting good judo. So um, – and then there's other grips. Uh, one of my favorite – uh, grips in judo, or I guess not judo, sambo really is the Georgian grip where you just kind of bend them over and reach down and grab, uh, grab the back of their belt. And I think that is fantastic, not only for sport, but for self-defense, but can't grab the belt either. So judo, it just, it's really gotten stuck where they, I, I see the essence of what they're trying to do, where they, they want to promote good judo, but Again, they lost the forest from the trees. And there's a couple other examples. Now, any kind of highlight reel you see, 
with judo, right? They're not like very meticulous with how they set things up. Like they, they jump in, they go flying. If they get a grip, they kind of like pull someone, jerk them the right way. And then it's suddenly just like, boom, their hips go flying. They like, they come turn flying in, they go for that Uchimata, they go for that Agoshi, right? And the way I teach, the way I look at things is uh, everything's done in three steps. Yeah. Here's your free BJJ lesson. And, um, the three steps for takedown is control the hips, right? And lots of ways you can do that. Lots of ways. I don't mean exactly grab the hips. Like, you know, you can get clinch control that controls the hips, things like that. But one, control the hips. And then two, you have to do the kazushi, the unbalancing. You have to break their balance, right? Because it doesn't matter what uh, action you're trying to do. The third step, which in this case is take them down, should be easy. It should be super easy. Let's put it in BJJ terms. If you're going for the arm bar, right, and uh, like look at a kid who does this, no idea what they're doing. They got the arm in between their legs, their knees are pointing up at the ceiling, and man, they're just bridging to high heaven trying to get that arm bar. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But the reason they're doing that is because their step one and their step two of, you know, like the control and the setup, they didn't put the correct work or as much work into it as they should have. So now they're really trying to make up for it by just hacking away at that tree, right? If you did a good job cutting down the tree with your first couple axe swings, that last axe swing should be easy. I mean, Junior should be able to come in there with his little axe and just and knock the tree over, right? So it's the same thing with takedowns. If you do a good job controlling the hips and you do a good job unbalancing them, then the throw should be super easy. But with judo, and especially the way, because again, I've trained it for a few years, the way I see them execute it, they don't. They go flying for the most part for the most part, they go flying through step number two. Instead of getting that Kazushi, they hope to get it all in one fell swoop. Now, they have become incredibly good at that, but I don't think that's the way judo should be done. And that's why I, part of the reason why I think it's such a high impact on the body, because I mean, I was told that every throw that you're, uh, that you're hit with, every time you hit the, hit the ground with a good throw, that that's equivalent of getting into like a 25 to 35, uh, 35 mile an hour car crash. And that really beats on your body. I mean, again, I love training as much as the next person, but throw days, man, I always dread them. Always did. And it's not, I mean, the throws suck, but it's just standing back up repeatedly. Whew. And I think it's because, you know, they train judo like that where they're just flying through their step two. They are just like, instead of like, you know, you give a couple whacks in the tree with the ax and then, you know what, let's just get the truck and just tie the chain to it and just try to rip the whole thing out, right? Instead of really taking the time to set it up and cut it down, they just kind of rely on the horsepower in the end. And I think that's one, a reason why it really beats on the body. And two, another reason why it makes it hard. And three, it's kind of the product of what's left by all of these rules that have insulated them and guided them to make to keep judo homogenous. And the problem is other martial arts like BJJ, kickboxing, Muay Thai, things like that, thanks to the advent of UFC, like it or hate it, have been forced to evolve for the better. Judo just kind of hangs out on its, on its own there. And because of it, a lot of people don't have great takedown games because the ROI, the return on investment for trying to learn these throws is high. It's very high. You can teach anyone a simple takedown like Georgian grip. That's like one of the first things I teach my students. One of the easiest takedowns you can do because it's, inc it's, like I said, incredibly easy to get. But to try to teach one of my students a pure judo throw, whew, that's hard. That takes a lot of time, a lot of investment where you kind of have to ask yourself, what's the point? Why even do it? Especially if, you if you're forced to like contend with certain grips or really put it in the context of the sport judo. As soon as you break out of that mold and then you're like, look, this grip's illegal, but let's be realistic. Let's take the grip that works. Then the ROI for judo lowers a lot. Makes sense? The other problem with sport judo that I have at least is in any sort of self-defense context, I never want to go to the ground, ever. The rule of thumb I was always told, and I think it's pretty accurate, is if you end up going to the ground, whether you put yourself there or they put you there, you have seven seconds to get back up because that's about the time it's going to take for the other person's friend to realize what's going on and potentially jump in and kick your head in, right? So if I end up having to take my opponent to the ground, I want to take them to the ground, break their arm, and get back up. Or do a takedown that doesn't involve me having to go down to the ground with them. There's a pretty good judo throw for that, right? You got the sasai or, you know, that's the, the I don't even remember the English for it. It's like foot place, wheel, turn, I don't know, whatever. And then you have the diashi barai, which is a foot sweep. Again, very hard ROI on that. But for the most part, a lot of these judo throws, like uchimata, 
I can't do a decent Uchimata without going to the ground, without connecting my hips, my chest to my opponent and taking them down to the ground. And that might speak to my skill, but I think that's typically true of a lot of judo throws, like an Ogoshi, uh, Tani Otoshi. Uh, I can't really put my all into these throws and make sure that I put them down unless I go to the ground with them. So for me, a lot of these throws are just kind of out for that aspect, but that's just how I look at it. Now, again, I love all martial arts. In my heart of hearts, I think I'm a warrior. I want to learn as much as I can, but more importantly, I want to find what works and leave what doesn't. And I think there is a tremendous amount of good in judo, real judo. Sport judo, I think, has completely lost their way, and I think they know it. But the problem is that the powers that be or those that are the stewards, the custodians of it, rather than trying to holistically change it or allow it to grow, adopting different grips, allowing things like the Georgian grip, allowing the sport to evolve. Instead, they double down and try to keep it pure. I think that's much to its detriment. That's why it's hard to get people to, to do judo, and it's even harder to get them to stay. Like I said, shooting from the hip a little bit, a lot of my own opinion, but I'm really curious to know what you think. Do you think sport judo still has a place? Do you think it's lost its way? Let me know. Send an email to podcast at grapplerpedia.com. So all the closing stuff, like, share, subscribe, rate, leave a review. Go download the podcast, which I don't know why I'm telling you that now. I don't know why people say that on the podcast if you're already listening to it, but it is available everywhere. And somehow you heard this without getting it. So I, How does that work? Oh my God, I just had an epiphany. All right, I'm going to go think about that. Hope you guys enjoyed share around, find us on the social medias. I'll catch you next time.